We are going to talk about five mistakes that I made when I started in game development and all of that and so much more coming up. What's up guys, Tim Rosswick here from Game Dev Underground. Now, if you're new here, we routinely post videos about game development, motivation, marketing, uh, sticking to it, all that kind of stuff. If that's stuff that you would like to hear about, uh, consider subscribing and hit the bell to make sure you get notified uh, when I post a video, which is daily. So uh, today we're gonna talk about five mistakes that I made when I got started in game development. And this is gonna be fun because I'm gonna take you down a trip down memory lane and we're going to go through a lot of different stuff that um i did wrong and that's what most of this channel is right the shit that i do wrong and i share it with you guys and hopefully you can learn something from it um but so let's start with number one um first thing i did that i think was stupid um not to say that if any of you do it you're stupid but for me this was stupid and i think uh, any new game developer should not start here. The first thing I did coming from programming was I wanted to make a game so I built a game engine. And that was probably one of the worst things that I could have done. That was a huge mistake that I made uh, because for the following reasons. One, an engine is so much more work than a game, right? It's just, it's a ridiculous amount of work. Two, an engine has so much dark work. I call dark work basically the work that you do that you don't see any results from. There's no visual indicators that you're making progress. Game engines have so much dark work. There is so much legwork that you have to do in order just to see any kind of progress. Like, especially if you don't start with like a 3D library or something and you're trying to build a 3D game, you know how much work you have to do to actually get like a, a spinning cube on screen? It's ridiculous. Like, and obviously that's super like, you know, that's super advanced stuff, but like even building an engine with, with some modern, modern, um, tool sets and libraries and, and, and all that stuff can be, you know, difficult. And when you're starting, you want to see the cool things. You want to say, oh, that's cool. You want to feel accomplished. You want to feel, um, you know, excited to move on. And the engine just sucks out so much of the work. Now, if you're super technical, you, you're an advanced programmer, um, maybe that's something you want to tackle. But when you're making your first game, I always like to say build games, not technology. Um, so that was a mistake that I made. And like... We won't even go into how long it took me to build an engine that didn't even get finished, didn't even get released or anything. So mistake number one, build games, not technology. Uh, I built technology. That was my mistake. So number two, um, I started on a game that was way too big. This is a problem that a lot of game developers face. Uh, matter of fact, I think this is the number one problem that game developers face. Uh, I did an entire video on why you should cut your game in half. If it's your first game, I'll link that up. Uh, but I, when I started, I started on a game called Project Exodus. And I've told this story a few times, but it was a huge FPS. It was inspired by Halo. It was going to have aliens and killer robots and, and all kinds of evasions and super twists and all kinds of locations and all kinds of guns. And it was epic. And I never finished it. I had to abandon it because the scope was so massive. This was a game that seriously today, if like... 20 people were working on it, all AAA, super epic dudes, it would still take a year or two to make. And I feel like a lot of people make the same mistake. They start with a game that's too big. They start with, and they may not realize that it's too big. Um, there's like a meme that, you know, indie game developers always make an MMORPG as their first game. Um, but a lot of people start with big projects, man. So if you're watching this and you're new and you haven't finished your first game yet, start on something like Pong, man. Make a Pong clone. Uh, I wouldn't even go as far as Tetris. Like, Tetris can get complicated. Uh, you know, try Galactica or, you know, um, that's a space game, right? I think. Or no, Asteroid. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, try something simple that you can get your head around games and don't think too big because you can always make that other game, right? Try and make something that's going to excite you and something that's tiny enough to get finished in a week or a month or, you know, a small amount of time so you can kind of get excited and move on to the next. So mistake number two was scope was too big. Mistake number three, um, I didn't show anybody my game. This is a big one. We talk about this a lot on the channel. Um, showing people is really important for multiple reasons. Uh, one, if you are isolated, 
uh, your motivation will drain. You will start to lose motivation and interest in your project if you isolate it from other people. Um, I did this. I worked alone on a game for a very long time and I ended up just abandoning it. And then it was really easy for me to get shiny object syndrome from there and just jump from project to project to project because I wasn't showing anybody my work and so there was no accountability. There was no people like, and I guess like I would show it to my Back in the day, way back in the day, I would show my games to my mom and then I'd work on a different game. And my mom would be like, what happened to the other game you're making? And I'd be like, no mom, you don't understand. Okay, this is the new game I'm making. It's going to be way better. And she knew, she knew, but she didn't say anything. Um, you need to show people so that they tell you stuff like that, right? They keep you on track. They keep you accountable. They keep you in that mode because that stuff is really important. And um, you got to make sure that you... Are progressing and you you want to be a finisher right like you want to get to the screen on Mortal Kombat where it says finish him you want to get to that point you don't want to be a a, a dabbler that just makes half games and never gets released because the, the world needs more indie games and you don't want to you don't want your shit to just be unfinished right that's not the people that we admire in the world are the people that have finished things the artists that have finished paintings the movie makers that have finished movies, the game developers that have made games, those are the people we look up to, right? Like, we wouldn't look up to the creator of Doom if he never finished Doom. We would just be like, we wouldn't even know Doom existed, you know? So, um, don't, didn't show anybody was a big mistake of mine. Uh, and I went on a little rant about finishing, which is important too, but just showing people, getting feedback, it's also important for to make a better product, right? So uh, for me, not showing people made me make this weird like thing that nobody wanted. The speed was off. Like I remember my first platformer, I didn't show anybody. The speed was ridiculous. This dude ran like a thousand miles a minute, like faster than Sonic the Hedgehog. It was insane. And the reason the speed had ended up to that point was because I would play the game, right? I would test it out. And then I would like make some tweaks and I'd play it out again. And play. I'd play the level a couple times and I'd be like, ah, oh, I can't get to that obstacle fast enough. And then I would speed him up. And I would keep doing that. What I didn't realize is that the game wasn't too slow. I was just, I was getting used to the game speed and I wanted to get through the process as quickly as possible. So I ended up making the main dude like super fast. And you know, that would have been super easy if I let one person play it, they gave me feedback. and. Sure enough, when I showed people, they said the dude's super fast, and I was like, oh, that made sense. But for a long time, I didn't show people, and so it just kind of existed in this worse state because um, I didn't have people to look at it. So mistake number three was not showing anybody. Mistake number four, uh, which relates to not showing any anybody because after I didn't show people for a long time, when I started showing people, then I tried to please everybody which is mistake number four. Um, so I went from not showing everybody to trying to please everybody. And one of the things I realized, like for this platformer, um, plenty of people told me, Tim, this dude is way too fast. And then I would slow him down and people would tell me, oh, he's not fast enough. He's not fast enough. And I'd be like, oh, well, shit, what, you know? And then I'd go back and forth between people and I would try to make everybody happy. And then a weird thing happened. I started asking people like, okay, do you play platformers? Do you like platformers? Like, I, I tried to get, like, understand who they were and, and where this feedback was coming from. And what I realized was um, a lot of my instincts were correct on some of the speed. Like, obviously, he was a little too fast in the beginning. But the people that play platformers and enjoy platformers, and it was a game similar to Super Meat Boy. So people that have played that game, those are the people that I want to listen to because those are the, the fans of my game. And so... Don't make the mistake of trying to please everybody. Now, this is a really tight like line to walk, right? Because on one side, you want to take feedback from people. But on the other side, you want to make your game your way, right? So knowing which feedback to take and which feedback to discard is really important. Um, there are plenty of people that will give you shitty feedback and you got to know that uh, so don't take all feedback uh, You got to get feedback. It's important, but don't take it all and realize who you're talking to understand the person giving you feedback It's not to say you should you know get an ego and uh, 
dismiss people's feedback like oh they don't know what they're talking about be careful about that right but um you know ask feedback for people that you trust that are going to give you the 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 real deal that like your genre of game um and two uh, one of the cool ways that i've i've gotten feedback too before just as an example of what you can do instead of trying to please everybody and getting feedback from all these different people was watch someone play your game don't ask them about it don't say anything don't tell them how to play it watch them play it i recently did a playthrough on ludum dare games and i know for a fact that some people watching that were like holy shit tim fucked up there he shouldn't have done that or he did something wrong i know that there are people that said that watching me play that game i know that happens because it's happened with my game before i know like it's so much easier to see something when you watch someone else do it because you don't know what what mindset they're in so watching a player play through your game is really important because you can learn a lot just by watching them you don't have to actually talk to them so the feedback that you get doesn't always have to be verbal it can be you know visual and watching them so that's how i got past number four um number five my biggest mistake of all time uh for sure this has had more impact on my ability to finish and release projects than anything else. Um, and I think that has been getting stuck in perfectionism. Uh, a lot of times as game developers, we are artists, we are creators, we are makers. And perfectionism is a horrible disease. It's this disease to want to constantly tweak. Now, a lot of developers look at perfectionism as a badge of honor, right? They think, yeah, look at me, I'm working hard, I'm, I'm getting the shit done, I'm, I'm making shit happen, um, I'm, I'm dedicated to making the best game ever. But in reality, what perfectionism does is you tweak way too long uh, for way little result. Um, you get stuck on little things that you, because you don't know the right answer, like, there are so many things, like especially when it comes to like variables and speeds and stuff. Um, for me, my biggest issue was always like, what's the right speed? What's the acceleration? What like I would mess with it, and mess with it, and mess with it, and mess with it, and it would it would be, oh, it would be exhausting. And not only that, but like especially on a platformer, right? If you mess with the the acceleration, the speed, and the jump height after you've built some levels, you got to go rebuild those levels now. Because all all of that stuff is designed around the jump height and the 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 interaction, the speed and all that. So there are so many loops that I went through just because I could not stop myself from obsessing over perfection. And so if if you're struggling with something like this now, one of my big things on the channel is is go with good enough, right? Go at eighty percent. Go at ninety percent. That's okay. Good, there's a such thing as good enough because you're never going to get to perfect perfect doesn't exist like you should try and make something great make something excellent not make something perfect because you'll be there forever and games there's so many developers out there that don't consider their complete game finished there are so many games that have been released on steams where if you talk to the developer they don't fit they don't consider their game finished they don't think of it as done it's just released and sometimes that released state is more important than the perfect state because that gets your game out there and you can always add stuff on top of it later but getting stuck in that perfectionism loop has been uh, really detrimental to uh, my completion and my motivation so uh, those are my five top mistakes that I made when I first started I hope they helped you guys out if you've made a big mistake in your game development and you want to share it with other people, please leave me a comment below. I would love to hear from you. And I'm sure plenty of people that um, are not as far advanced as you can learn from you as well. So let's start a discussion in the comments. Uh, once again, I'm Tim Ruswick, and I will see you guys in the next video.